Ryan Blair, ex-gang member, now multi-millionaire entrepreneur. Ryan, you were in a series of Los Angeles gangs. Did you ever kill anyone? No, I, I didn't, but I did witness a few people get killed, and uh, I can tell you it does change you. How does it change you? Uh, you always think about it, and uh, you understand how precious life is. Um, you know, this was a, an environment in Los Angeles when gangs were glorified. Uh, you know, Boys in the Hood was popular. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people were carrying guns and doing really big crimes. And so, uh, you know, in fact, my uh, childhood sweetheart, she was my babysitter, was murdered in a drive-by shooting. And I was uh, pretty close by when it happened. So it was a terrible thing. What positive lessons do you feel you learned from being a member of a gang in terms of becoming a startup entrepreneur? You know, it's fascinating because I'll never forget. I was in juvenile hall one time and I saw these guys writing down all the various tactics. It was almost like a business plan to uh, becoming professional drug importer and exporters. And I remember seeing the level of detail that they went through. And I still think about this. These guys were professional entrepreneurs. They were running a very difficult business to run, one with high risk, with a high reward. Uh, you know, buying a product low and selling it high. So I saw a lot of models in the, you know, socioeconomic poverty areas and so forth and gang uh, areas. Uh, and I, I saw a lot of entrepreneurs. And I think I learned, you know, how to hustle. I learned how to have ambition. Um, uh, many of the, the quotes that I cite in my book are from hip hop and rap, right? So I think I got a lot of, uh, a lot out of it. Um, and now I actually give back. I'm a huge donor to a group called Urban Born that actually teaches entrepreneurship two kids um, that, are, that came from similar environments that I did, if not even worse environments. What about leadership skills? It seems as if gangs are very traditional human kinds of organizations where you have clear hierarchies. And the yeah. same is true very often of startup uh, businesses. Yeah, you know, I did learn a little bit about leadership. Uh, I learned a lot about politics, and that's why I hate them, uh, particularly within a company. Uh, because in gang environments, they're really generally ruled by politics because, you know, there's no pay hierarchy. Uh, it's all political hierarchy. And it's based on intimidation, threat, uh, rumor, um, you know, much like our politicians uh, act and work today. What about the experience of fear? I think one of the, the, the most um, convincing arguments in your book is that as a gang member, you experience such primitive emotions of fear and ambition that everything in the business world was secondary and never in any way shocking. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I think that there's, one, there's been a few times I've leaned on those experiences. Um, one in particular was during the 2008 recession. I'd sold my company, Visalis, to a group, a publicly traded company. The deal was pegged at 100 plus million bucks. Um, I made millions in cash. and. Uh, had a large earnout opportunity. Um, when the economy changed and the consumer changed and people quit buying luxury uh, related items, the company almost went out of business. We went down from two and a half million a month in sales down to 600,000 a month in sales. We were losing 600,000 a month and we needed a million bucks. And uh, I had already put about eight million back into the business to, you know, struggling to keep it alive. And I'll never forget, and I leaned on, you know, and I, I call the book Nothing to Lose because I leaned on that mindset. I put my last million bucks in. I went to work, you know, 18, 19 hours a day. And you know, now that company will do over 200 million in sales this year. It's one of the fastest growing companies on the planet. And uh, I wouldn't have been able to turn the company around like I did had I not said, "What do I really have to lose here?" You know, and went all in basically. And a lot of times people don't do that because they think they have a lot to lose or they're not willing to take the risk, and so they never get the reward. If you'd gone to business school, do you think you'd be sitting here now talking to me about your entrepreneurial successes? Yeah, you know, I ended up, I did end up going to business school. After um, I, I met my mentor, you know, he had a requirement of me. He would give me a job, but I had to get my high school diploma, uh, and then I had to go to college. And um, so I ended up going to a community college first, and then I went to a business school in Southern California. Where did you Cal go Lutheran. to business school? I went to Cal Lutheran University. Uh, and then I, their business program there. And then I uh, dropped out to start my own company after I was about at my senior year. So, you know, the irony of it was I never dreamed I'd ever go to college, but the moment I had an opportunity, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to do so, I left. Do you agree with Peter Thiel's premise that young, smart entrepreneurs are better off starting businesses than staying in school? 
You know, I, I believe that's an individual decision. For me, uh, you know, it's funny. The dean of my college told me, you need to leave. I was trying to recruit the professors to come work for me, and I had a big business worth running. So I think, you know, uh, Peter's correct in that if you have a great idea and it has merit and, you know, it's been smell tested by great advisors, you know, you might want to take a break from school to pursue it, uh, particularly an idea that the timing may be now. Um, but that's not for everyone, and I wouldn't recommend that. I, I mentor a lot of people, and they ask me that question a lot. And it just really depends on them and their tenacity and their willingness. But I can't tell you this. I've since donated to a lot of colleges uh, through my foundation and others. So uh, I have no regrets about leaving early.